of this respectant of no harm to the participant uh, that you know, while while following these ethical guidelines this ethics research ethics uh, we have we do respect and cause no harm to the participant this is very impo much important thing at this point i will discuss in the coming slides as a sign of respect to the other subjects and cause no harm to the participant which is a professional requirement which is a, which is a requirement to take funding so this funding comes that is in some organizations or in some you can say university we can get funding or we get some uh, you can say in the in the in, uh, in the form of scholarship or anything uh, funding comes in the uh, in the uh, when we write a proposal for research proposal and we submit to some organization like ugc eitt and many ngos are there who are funding the uh, research work that the person the scholar who is doing research he cannot spend money uh, for that uh, research work but he is able to do that search and find a solution for the problem that the society is facing in that uh, in that you can say case that um, organization it may be ugc it may be dst or it may be any organization that gives funding uh, to that research scholar but that funding is only given if the research scholar if that researcher has followed all the ethical guidelines do's and don'ts everything he has followed and after that he has he has made that proposal then the expert may be allows that organization to give the funding it is very much important and if uh, the expert may be that uh, the finds that committee finds that the expert scholar has not followed the ethical guidelines or that do's and don'ts he have not followed um, then that agency or that expert committee that dismisses that expert proposal and it is rejected by the research committee and no funding is given over, over there to that research scholar so in a coming to the basic ethical principles basic ethical principles in thesis writing there are some of the fundamental principles for research ethical consideration which should be followed rigorously by the in a master or phd research scholars minimize the risk of harm acquire informed consent then protect anonymity and confidentiality respect others idea and acknowledge them avoid deceptive or exaggeration practices and provide the right to withdraw now uh, coming to the first ethical principle they minimize the risk of harm this is the most important ethical consideration in any research work where it explains that the research scholar should not only focus on getting good results but also avoid doing any harm it may be it may be harm to environment it may be harm to society it may be harm to nature or it may be harm to any you can say human being or any creature like animals uh, like in uh, life sciences or uh, the person doing research in biology botany they do uh, they do experiments on the animals like rabbit or anything else they they should not show any cruelty or anything else if they are lacking somewhere in search and they are not getting the good result they should not show cruelty to that animal on which they are performing the experiment so uh, they are that such scholar he should avoid doing any harm in other words the participant should not be harmed in ways during this search phase sometimes the university may ask the student to fill out the ethical clearance form if the supervisor feels high potential risk in the research work uh, mostly in this uh, you can say uh, this clearance form is to be filled in the university uh, so that uh, there should not be any harm to any anybody in, while doing that uh, research work or while doing that uh, you can say experiment in the ethical clearance form the student is asked to disclose the aim objective in the study previous works on the similar area and potential risk to the structure participant and the surrounding moreover there are possibilities for different types of harm such as physical harm mental stress financial breakdown etc during the research phase so uh, dear participants dear candidates it is very much important that when you are doing a research you are doing a quality research it doesn't matter that i doing the research you have to get the good results on the same Uh, on the same you can say side uh, that if you are getting good results you have also to take care of not giving harm to anybody it may be uh, it may be any nature environment or any you can say living being you have
has to take care of this. Then coming, acquire informed consent. The participant taking part on your search work should be informed about the search process methodology and most importantly about the role of the participant in the search work. This uh, participant we get uh, when uh, when we have to go to visit other laboratories in some you can say search work like you, you can say in chemistry or in other uh, in which you have to perform the experiments in the laboratories we have to visit the different laboratories like we have to go to Bangalore or any other uh, cities for that in that research laboratory that laboratory had he he provides to a participant and uh, you can say assistant who will work with you who will assist you because you don't know everything about that laboratory and that person is an assistant in search work with you so you have to tell him everything about the search process methodology and everything that you are going to search and what you are what is the motive of your search the participant has the freedom and rights to decide whether he or she wants to participate or not because when uh, when you uh, disclose everything, methodology, your motto, your objective, everything, if you are doing a peer research, then there will be no problem to the participant. Uh, so, before signing the agreement, the participant should be thoroughly explained about the research process and the potential risks in it. The research scholar should acquire an official full consent statement from the participant prior to the research work. He has to take a, a written consent from that person. Moreover, the participant should not be deceived or forced to take part in the research work. This ethical consideration is mainly established to protect the vulnerable uh, people from any poor search practice. So this is also again very important that the person who is going to assist you, who belongs to that laboratory, that uh, that is a parent, uh, parental organization where he is working, and he is going to assist you, he is going to work with you, help you in doing that experiment. Uh, so you should not deceive him, uh, you should tell him everything in clear, transparent. And uh, it is again an ethic research ethics that there should be transparency in your research work. And you should take consent of that person uh, also uh, while uh, uh, before doing that one. Then protect anonymity and confidentiality. Confidentiality is again a very important research ethic. The identity and the research data about the participant should be protected throughout the research process. If the PhD research scholar is interested in disclosing the identity of the participant in the PhD research dissertation, prior permission and full consent is required from the participant. So, if you want to acknowledge that person or you want to add his name in your search work, you have to take prior permission because in some organizations they do not want to disclose this thing. So, if he gives the consent, only then you can add or disclose his name in your search work or research dissertation. This thing should be again taken care of. This comes under confidentiality, confidentiality research ethics. Then coming, respect others' ideas and acknowledge them. The ethical consideration clearly reflects the character and temperament of the research scholar. During the research process, PhD scholar should be open to feedback, ideas, opinions and comments from others. So, uh, research is uh, such an area, such an activity where you, where you have to share the ideas and also respect the ideas of the other uh, fellow researchers, fellow colleagues who have experience in the same, uh, you can say, field. Moreover, the research scholar uh, should learn to appreciate and respect others' ideas and opinions. And if you are uh, you are following somebody's ideas, you have accepted somebody's ideas, and you are uh, adopting that idea in your dissertation or in your thesis, you are writing in that, you should appreciate that uh, person and how will you respect that person? So you will acknowledge his name. You will add his name in the acknowledgement part of your uh, research thesis and uh, it will give him appreciation and it will also motivate that person and he will again be willing to help you in your search work wherever it is needed. It is paramount important uh, to give appropriate credit to the respected person in the team for their contribution. If the research scholar fails to acknowledge other scholars work or other you can say fellow colleagues work which is used in uh, that dissertation, PhD dissertation or RAMTAC dissertation, then it is considered as an act of intellectual theft or plagiarism. This is very much important thing. This plagiarism is a very important part 
and I will discuss in detail in the coming slides. This thing you have to take care while doing your search. It may be your PhD search or it may be your uh, MTech search, your MPhil search, master search, any type of search you are doing. doing. And even if you are writing your search paper, uh, even then you have to take care of this uh, uh, plagiarism. It is a very dangerous thing and it is, you can say, punishable offense. Uh, if it is found, you can be punished. So it is advisable to go for a plagiarism correction once we drop the cases done. It is very much important to take care of this <coughs> plagiarism, this acknowledgement part while uh, writing your uh, PhD uh, dissertation, PhD thesis or your uh, master's thesis, contact thesis. So acknowledgement should be done uh, to the person who have assisted you in your search work and you have given their ideas, whose ideas you have shared in your such dissertation. Then comes provide right to withdraw the PhD research scholar should ensure that the research participant is aware of the right to withdraw from search work at any part of the research base. This is again very important to get the confidence or to get the base of that person, research assistant, research participant that I have already talked that you should ensure him that if you, uh, if you feel like that I am not, not doing a fair search, I am not, I have not used fair means in my search and the objective of doing a search is not, you can say fair, uh, you find it and then you can withdraw your name. This, uh, by doing this, that person feels uh, something independent, that he is independent to do uh, anything, it, it is his right to assist you or it is his own will that he can withdraw if he feels that you are not doing a fair stuff. If this such particular same thing, if this such participant is willing to withdraw from it, he has the legal rights to do it. Pressurizing or compelling the such participant to in the research work, despite the participant interest to be strictly avoided. It is against the research ethics that we should take care of this thing and uh, when you will show him that you have the right to withdraw from this work if you are not, uh, you are feeling not comfortable, uh, this will, uh, you will win his faith, you will win his, you can say, views. So there are, the, these are the top six basic principles in the ethical con ethic consideration which should be meticulously followed by the PhD scholar to develop a quality dissertation. These were the basic, uh, you can say, basic principles of PhD uh, writing, PhD dissertation or PhD thesis synopsis that I have discussed. These are the basic principles. Now, uh, coming ahead, uh, then we will come towards the basic principles of research and publication ethics. So, uh, these are the common research ethics that we can follow uh, while writing a research paper, while writing a conference paper, and then while writing a PhD synopsis or PhD dissertation. These are, uh, these are followed everywhere. First thing is honesty, then objectivity, integrity, carefulness, openness. We all have been uh, studying from our first standard that honesty is the best quality. So, the best way create a, uh, you can say, 100% uh, quality project, quality dissertation, where there no, may not come any plagiarism or intellectual act uh, like this, any allegation. So, we need to be honest and by being honest, uh, it is the best remedy uh, to create a good quality dissertation on which there may not be any uh, allegation by anybody else. Uh, then comes objectivity, uh, there should be objectives of your search work, without, uh, without your objectives, without any objective, you will not be able to do any research, PhD research or MTech research, because if there are no objectives of your research, you don't know what you want to do and uh, for what problem you are finding the solution, you don't know and without objectives, you will not be able to frame the result and findings. I have I have told you yesterday that your objectives and the results they should match with each other. If they do not match, even then you haven't completed your search. So objectives should be there in your search work to uh, give a good quality uh, research result. 
then integrity. What is integrity? We talked about honesty. Then its integrity is so doing your work honestly. Then nobody is in you. That you are internally honest. That there is no check on you. Uh, we all Indian. We believe in God. That God is there, and we also have faith in this thing. That God is always always having a watch on us. That what we are doing, what right we are doing, and what wrong we are doing. So, uh, so having a, a good belief in, in God, so we should also do the research work with integrity, be honest. When nobody is watching us, that what we are doing. Then carefulness, we should do every research work, research experiment, right? This is even carefully. There should not be, there shouldn't be any carelessness while performing our. Uh, experiments or while writing our uh, research pieces. Then openness, there should be openness. I have already talked previously about the transparency that there should be transparency in your first work. You should disclose your objectives, your methodology, your techniques, your tools, how you are working, on what you are working, and what you are going to find out. There should be transparency in your first work. Then respect for intellectual property. Uh, you should not. Uh, uh, you should respect the uh, research work done by your fellow researcher, by your fellow colleagues. In the starting, I had talked about uh, respect for the uh, other researchers. How will we respect? When we are uh, we are respecting the research work that that person has done. We are respecting the findings that have done by doing a hard work. Uh, so when we Use that finding or refer that finding in our research thesis or refer some definition or anything else from other person's thesis or research work. How will we respect? We will acknowledge that person. We will put that his person's name in the references. We will refer that research paper or we will refer that thesis in the references part and we will also acknowledge. Acknowledge that person. We can put his name in the acknowledgement also. Uh, in this way, we will give respect to that uh, fellow researcher or fellow colleague. Then comes confidentiality. I have already talked about confidentiality. That we should uh, keep the confidentiality um, while doing the research. Likewise, we are going to any other organization for uh, doing the survey, uh, for getting the secondary data, for getting the pri uh, primary data, for for interviewing some person, for having a physical interaction. So, when you go to that organization, there are some, some secrets of that organization. There are some, you can say, some, you can say, regulations of that organization. We should not break that secrecy or that, you can say, confidentiality of that organization. That organization likes that our this secret should not go out so when you go there for your own purpose you can solve your purpose and you should not break the confidentiality of that organization and respect for colleagues i have already talked we will respect how will we respect the colleagues if we get an idea our colleagues get an idea and he gives us an idea regarding the research dissertation how can we improve what extra can we add we can respect that by uh, adding his name in the acknowledgement part, the non-discrimination and social responsibility. It is our social responsibility while doing the research and while writing the research paper uh, when uh, that research thesis, that while doing the research, there should not be harm to any nature, environment, any living being, human being, or uh, you can say uh, any animal on which you are performing the experiment. Then comes important areas in research and publication ethics. First is authorship. I will talk about authorship. What is authorship? How many types of authorship are there? And what are the guidelines? What what we should take care about the authorship? Author is a person who writes a research paper or a research thesis. He is the person, even the person who writes a book, he is also an author. So uh, there are some guidelines or some points that should be taken taken care of in the authorship part. Then comes plagiarism. I have already talked about plagiarism. We will talk in the coming slides about the plagiarism. What is plagiarism? How plagiarism occurs? How it can be avoided? And how many types of plagiarism are there? We should know everything 
while doing our research. Then peer review. What is peer review? The peer review is a committee of experts who review your thesis and who uh, takes care of your work paper that you haven't uh, used any unethical uh, practices. So this is again important area in search and publication ethics. We should take care of the peer review also that our dissertation, our PhD thesis and our search paper is going to be peer reviewed. That there are some external examiners, internal examiners who review your such dissertation and when they find that it is you haven't used any unethical practices, everything is ethical, you have done a quality research, your, you can say research objectives and the findings are matching, you have got the research, you have found the solution for the problem that you were looking for and this search matches your title after that that uh, review committee that external expert external expert say you can say to give a consent to the university that research work is okay and you can uh, you can proceed further so and if it is not okay this does not match to the ethical guidelines then your search this is it may be rejected or it may be uh, you can say given commands that you have to uh, you have to do this thing right, this thing you have to correct uh, this rectification or squared or you have to do uh, these references, you have to change, you have to uh, refer front references. So according to the command, we have to change the details and again submit it in and again that uh, peer review is done. So we should take care of this thing that our dissertation is to be peer review. Then search with animals, I have already talked that while doing a search, we should not show any cruelty with the animals, then search with the human subject and search in misconduct. And there should not be, shouldn't be any misconduct while doing the research. When we are not following the guidelines, the research guidelines that the university or that respective university has given us while doing, while starting that search, if we are not following this, this is also a search misconduct. We are now coming to the authorship. Uh, research evolves from collaboration and assistance between experts and police. That when we are doing a research, you, know, you have to get collaborated or you have to get, uh, you can say, guidance or you have to get support assistance from your supervisor, co supervisor, so you can say, uh, any assistant, any laboratory person, you have to take, uh, you have to collaborate with that person and get the guidance from that expert regarding that research. So, uh, without the collaboration, uh, research cannot be complete. Authorship is the process of deciding about on whose name, who name uh, a research paper belongs. That authorship is the process by which you come to know uh, that uh, who has written this research paper, who is the author of this research paper, whose ideas are this, that, uh, that means authorship. Authorship is reserved for the person who receives primary credit and hold primary responsibility for a published work. That uh, author is a person uh, who is wholly solely responsible for the publication or for the research work that has been done and a primary credit is given to that uh, first author. Then uh, decide which clip should be listed as authors or co-authors. Co-author is a person who has assisted you in your search work. It may be your PhD supervisor, it may be your PhD co-supervisor, or it may be any other, uh, uh, you can say, any other expert, or any colleague, or any research fellow who has helped you in uh, writing that research paper, or in that, uh, and in case of dissertation, your supervisor and co-supervisor, uh, they are your two authors for your that uh, research thesis. So it is a very, uh, you can say, important area main area that should be uh, taken care of. So coming in the, in the part we will talk about the classification of authorship or you can say uh, types of authorship. First is guest authorship. We all know who is the guest and uh, guest is the person who, uh, who, who comes to our home. He may be our relative, he may be our friend or he may be any, uh, you can say any other well-wisher or well-wisher who comes to our home and we respect that person, we can say greet him, we give him good fooding and everything. Likewise in India we say that God is the guest is our life is in a form of God. So we should respect that person. So 
coming to the point that what is guest authorship, the author hasn't contributed to the research or writing by his or her credit, it can increase the credibility of the published work. Guest authorship happens when influential individuals lend their name to a study to boost its credibility. However, these people uh, weren't involved in the actual research. The most common unethical practice is to use the name of PhD advisor or department head as an author. So, um, I hope you got what I want to say that the guest author is that person whose name has been added to your research paper, mostly in research paper, uh, to uh, get credibility. Like there is a you are a person or you are doing research in you can say electrical engineering or any other field and there may be expert in that field um, and you can uh, you want to add that person's name in the research paper that by adding his name the reviewer or the general person or the conference conference people they will think that it is a good quality paper it is a valuable paper we should adapt it because there is name of that person who is a renowned personality and he is known to you and you have added his name he is like a guest in your uh, research paper uh, 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 he doesn't know about the search work that has been done but you have good relations with that person so you have added his name he is a guest author and we should not uh, we should not add such names it is an unethical practice and if it is detected, uh, it is uh, it comes into the you can say uh, uh, the or the expert committee or the reviewers they come to know that that person hasn't contributed to the research and he, he has only lent his name to you. So this comes under unethical practice, and your that such paper uh, that may be rejected, you may be asked to uh, put only the names of the actual and real authors. Then comes the gift. We all know what is a gift. A gift is a kind of thing that we give to some person on, uh, on some uh, occasion. It may be marriage anniversary, it may be birth anniversary, or it may be any other event on Diwali or Raksha Bandhan, any other event you can give a gift to your, your friend, your relative, your brother, your sister, any person you can give that. So, in the in this field of authorship, who is a, what is gift authorship? The author, we have an association with the research or manuscript. In this practice, an author is added to a paper when they haven't actually made a contribution to the work. Perhaps to reward a collaborator, return a paper or for some other gain. The most common unethical practice is same likely. I have talked previously, it may be your PhD, uh, PhD supervisor, it may be head of the department, it may be your principal, it may be director of your institution or any other person from whom you can get some favor. So we add that person's name uh, to just return, his, uh, return the favor that he, he has done to us or we want to get favor from that person in advance, we put his name uh, in the research paper and you want to make him happy that he will be pleased that uh, a research paper, uh, uh, one more publication has been added to my, as you can say, profile. To make him happy, uh, to please him, uh, we add that person's name uh, like, uh, uh, like gifting, uh, gifting and person on his can say any event. Similarly, you want to uh, give that person a publication. So that is called gift authorship and gift authorship is again, uh, you can say again unethical practice like we can add the name of our HOD, our director, our principal uh, to get in favor uh, that he will, uh, he will favor me. So we add him name, add his name and when it is published give that uh, paper or that publication to that person then come to ghost authorship and ghost is very well very well known uh, very well known word what is ghost ghost, uh, uh, is ghost is that you can say we uh, think it so that ghost is a person uh, who is not visible we cannot see him and he can do anything he likes so we got horrified by the name of ghost and even 
uh, we should also get a qualified from the board of the also. You think it is again an unethical practice that should not be practiced. Uh, it is not comes under the quality sir. Those doctors should occur when someone that participated actively in this search is not disclosed in the author's uh, byline or acknowledgement section, this person can be a research unrelated professional that helps the main author to draft and add the manuscript. So, the ghost authorship, uh, if we come to the research paper or in nowadays the practice is going on uh, that the person who has not talent to write the research paper or you don't have time to devote towards your search, towards your search paper, there are some professionals who can make a research paper for you and they uh, make a search paper for you uh, and you uh, pay for them and uh, your name is mentioned over there as a primary author, as the first author and that person's name is not mentioned over there because you have paid him but that person who is the uh, real searcher or real author of that research paper he is that person whose name has not been mentioned he is like a ghost and he is uh, not visible so that ghost author is again uh, you can say ghost author is again an unethical practice and coming to the same point uh, on the other part uh, next point second point of ghost authorship and uh, that while writing a search PhD thesis, there are some professionals, some persons who, who have helped you in typing your, you can say typing your thesis or the persons who have uh, helped in uh, doing editing or proofreading or anything they are doing your such thesis. So, if you need to mention their name in the acknowledgement, you should acknowledge them, you should appreciate them uh, so that uh, they may not hesitate. Uh, uh, next time to help or assist you or any other research scholar. So I hope you got who is an ghost author, what is ghost authorship and you should take care of this type of authorship while authoring a research paper or while writing your uh, PhD dissertation or PhD thesis. So coming to another important point of your uh, research work, of your research dissertation, that is plagiarism. Plagiarism is the act of stealing someone else's work and attempting to pass it as your own. You are uh, stealing somebody else's research work and uh, you are showing that this research work I have done. Plagiarism includes copying text, copying text from some source, then ideas, images or data from another source, even from your own publication without giving credit to the original source. This thing I, we have already discussed in the previous days about auto plagiarism or self plagiarism. Uh, so uh, it is, the, uh, it is uh, to copy any matter from our own publication this, that is again comes under plagiarism. So we should not copy paste the matter, we should not steal other uh, others work and if you are writing somebody's research work, uh, you should put it in the reference form. And uh, uh, if plagiarism is detected during the peer review process, your manuscript may be rejected. If plagiarism is up to some limit, uh, it is up to 10 to 15 percent, uh, then it is not considered. And uh, if it exceeds, then uh, if, if it goes up to 30, 35 percent or 50 percent, then the reviewer puts a command uh, that removes this plagiarism and if your plagiarism is up to 80%, 90%, 100%, then your data search manuscript or search thesis dissertation uh, that is uh, rejected. So my dear participants, dear research scholar, you should uh, take care of this thing, you can say very carefully that give credit where the credit is due how will you give the credit? You will put his name in the uh, reference part from where you have uh, uh, referred the material. And if you have used the same words, you will put in the quotation mark and put his name in acknowledgement. And uh, my dear participant, uh, the scholar, you should, uh, you should keep in mind that plagiarism is a crime. It is a crime. Please respect the intellectual property and if it is proved, you 
can be punished and you can be debarred you from your research work. That coming to the type of plagiarism, likewise there were three types of authorship, guest author, gift author and ghost author. Similarly, there are uh, eight types of plagiarism, complete plagiarism, ghost-based plagiarism, direct plagiarism, self or auto plagiarism, then para plagiarism, inaccurate authorship, we can say inaccurate plagiarism, then partial plagiarism, then accidental plagiarism. All these are types of plagiarism. Now one by one I will discuss that what is complete plagiarism. I hope uh, by the name you will you have come to know what do you mean by complete. Complete means hundred percent total. Complete plagiarism is the most severe form of plagiarism where a researcher takes a manuscript or study that someone has created and submits it under his or own name. You download a research paper and you delete that person's name and put your own name under the title and submit it to the conference. That is totally 100% complete plagiarism and it is equal to intellectual theft and stealing. So we should not practice this thing. It may be any type of plagiarism that is punishable. Then comes partial plagiarism. We talked about complete plagiarism. It was because a hundred percent matter that is taken from or stolen from the other person's research work that has been already published. Then partial plagiarism, it is the second part of the plagiarism. Uh, this is when a person takes work from a multiple amount of authors and just paraphrases from those authors without doing the actual research. In complete uh, plagiarism, we had taken the full matter, full research paper from other person and in this uh, what that person does, he takes uh, by parts, he takes uh, some part from one such paper, some part from other such paper, 10 percent from one such paper, 20 percent from other such paper. So he makes a complete such paper, he makes a complete thesis uh, that uh, comes under partial plagiarism. Uh, it is again unethical practice. We are talking about such ethics, ethical issues, ethic issues in thesis writing and in terms of synopsis writing. Uh, we should uh, take care of this thing and this plagiarism. It is a very serious matter. Then uh, comes to the direct plagiarism. Uh, what is direct plagiarism? By the word direct, you, I hope you came to know what is direct. Direct plagiarism is word for word transcription of a section of someone else's work without attribution and without quotation marks. Uh, if you have taken uh, some word, same word to word from other author, you have to put it in the quotation marks and if you have put it into the quotation marks, then it comes under direct plagiarism. The deliberate plagiarism of someone else's work is unethical, academically dishonest and grounds for the disciplinary action including expulsion that you may be expelled out from that search work or search it is and your that search is the search paper that may be you can say dismissed or rejected from the publication. So there should not be direct direct plagiarism also then coming to the self plagiarism. We all know what is self or we also say auto plagiarism that self plagiarism is defined as a type of plagiarism writer or author republished a work in its entirety or reuses portions of a previously written text while announcing a new work. That one such paper I have published on my name that has been published in a journal and then again I want to write another such paper and that such paper is also related to that area and to I can tell, I want to take help of that search paper. What do I take? What do I do? I I copy that one paragraph or two paragraphs from that search paper, and when that uh, comes to be proved, I claim that it, it is my own work and it is not stealing the work. Uh, I can do it, but uh, ethically or by you can say uh, according to the regulations, you cannot republish your work, even your own done. You cannot uh, mention in an another such paper. You should take care of that thing. That self plagiarism or auto plagiarism, it is again another unethical practice that you should take care of. Then coming to the
the paraphrasing plagiarism. Paraphrasing is a plagiarism. If you don't properly credit the original author, then second thing is paraphrasing is a plagiarism. If your text is too close to the original body, if you directly copy a sentence or phrase, you should quote it instead. So uh, paraphrasing plagiarism means that you have uh, taken help of some uh, research work. You have taken the matter from there and you want to change the wording. Uh, you, uh, but the sense remains the same. But you are unable to do, the, do that thing in expertise. Uh, you have not good English knowledge. You are not expert at your English vocabulary. And you are unable to do that thing in a right manner. So that comes under paraphrasing plagiarism because your text comes too close to the original wording. Uh, so that is called paraphrasing plagiarism. Then comes the inaccurate plagiarism. Inaccurate authorship or misleading attribution can happen in two ways. That we have already talked that ghost authorship or best authorship, they are all uh, a type of inaccurate plagiarism. In one form, when an individual contributes to manuscript but doesn't get credit of it, uh, that is ghost authorship. That when an individual contributes to a manuscript, he has, uh, he has uh, participated, uh, participated in your thesis, he has done some work in your thesis, it may be editing, it may be typing, or it may be uh, proofreading, or any other thing he has contributed to the work directly or indirectly. But you didn't give credit to that person, you even didn't put his name in the acknowledgement, that again comes under inaccurate plagiarism. And the second form is opposite when an individual gets credit without contributing to the work. Uh, that is, you can say, gift author or guest author, that when uh, he hasn't done anything, but he is getting the full credit of that research publication or that research work, uh, that, is, uh, that comes under inaccurate plagiarism, and we also say it in accurate authorship. Then comes an accidental plagiarism. It is also called unintentional plagiarism that uh, we all are human beings when we perform any mistake somebody uh, you can say what is us or who do we say us that you are not you are not doing right you are wrong that we human beings we give an excuse that i didn't know i am not aware about that thing that i don't know that it shouldn't be done uh, so please excuse me but in case of research work in case of PhD dissertation of this writing uh, this uh, you can say this mistake done by accident, uh, it is not excusable, uh, nobody will excuse you if that plagiarism has been done accidentally, that you didn't know and you were not, you hadn't done it in intentionally, accident plagiarism occurs when a writer fails to follow scholarly procedure and accidentally copies parts of work that have already been composed or published. So, uh, this, uh, the, uh, this copying, uh, copying work or referring work accidentally without knowing uh, that you are not unaware, even that, uh, even, even in that condition, uh, that thing is considered as uh, plagiarism. It comes uh, accidental plagiarism that I didn't know, even then uh, you are that uh, practice is punishable. Uh, it comes under, uh, you can say, plagiarism and uh, you, you may have to uh, you may have to face the risk of uh, this thing of this uh, uh, you can say accidental uh, plagiarism uh, then comes uh, uh, coming to the next plagiarism part that is source based plagiarism uh, this is again an important uh, type of plagiarism so there are this is very important part in uh, our writing or the office writing and even in the research uh, paper writing so it is very much important to mention and what is source based plagiarism this type of plagiarism refers to instances why misleading sources are involved misleading that you have mentioned the sources but you are misleading that expert committee that reviewer committee or that uh, your external and internal examiner for example, the author may have two sources of information, but only uh, refers to one. That you have two sources, you have taken help from two research papers, but you are only referencing only one of them, and one one has one you haven't mentioned. Uh, that is again.
in force based plagiarism and another form of force based plagiarism wouldn't be when an author quotes a non existent or incorrect source this is again a very important thing that we human beings we think that we are very smart and that we, then we, we can do anything and other person he will not come to know that we have done what we are doing or what we want to do in this form of source based plagiarism what uh, what i want to say uh, that uh, suppose you have uh, taken matter or you you can say you, you have picked matter from uh, five research papers different research paper and uh, like partial uh, it comes under partial plagiarism you have taken uh, from that five research papers and uh, what smartness you have performed uh, that you didn't mention even out of not even one of those five research papers and you have mentioned other five research papers from where you haven't taken any uh, help or any matter or you have you have mentioned uh, dummy research papers likewise you have uh, I, i haven't done work any in the field of artificial intelligence or machine learning and you have been writing uh, in the uh, references that uh, this uh, research paper written on artificial intelligence by dr hadeep singh and i have referring this you have mentioned five research papers under my uh, name uh, that i have authored on artificial intelligence and machine learning but i haven't done any time on that that research paper do not exist that is again post based plagiarism and in the coming slides i will tell you that you are not only smart that it or information technology that is super smart and that it detects everything that you are doing what is ethical and what is unethical so you should take care of this thing dear researcher this is very important thing to be taken care like when we complete full research we are coming to the this part and we we have done it and when it is rejected or dismissed so we feel very much annoyed so we should take care of this ethical practice then comes the data fabrication what is fabrication fabrication means saying that data exists when it doesn't you are showing that this data is existing but actually in real sense it doesn't exist or creating data out of nothing that is called data fabrication creating imaginary respondents in a survey is fabrication that you are going to do a survey survey you are shown in your search work that this data i have taken by doing this search by filling this survey filling this questionnaire but you have you, you, you have done that survey automatically by your own self by doing imaginary respondents you haven't visited any respondents you haven't and uh, contacted and responded by on your own by doing an imagination you have filled that question uh, uh, by different email ids or any other uh, any other post you have filled that and you have gathered the data that again comes data fabrication in scientific and academic research data fabrication is the intentional misrepresentation of the results and this also includes image manipulation then image manipulation is also a part of plagiarism that is unethical practice and we should take care of it uh, while doing our test writing a research paper or a phd dissertation image manipulation involves the transformation or alteration of a photograph using various methods and techniques to achieve desired results some photograph manipulations are considered to be skillful work while others are considered to be unethical practice especially when used to deceive the public so there are many type of images or photographs that are available on the net various websites <laughs> some you can say photographs or images they have copyrights you cannot copy them you cannot manipulate them without taking the permission of that uh, concerned person who are taken the copyright uh, without taking the uh, without taking asking that person without taking permission from that person you are manipulating that image that again from the other unethical practice and we should not de- do it and if you want to uh, uh, include that in your dissertation or in your work work and you think that it will be helpful for me you should take permission from that person who has taken copyright to the original you can say researcher and uh, or who's original uh, work is that image you should take uh, help of uh, take permission of that person then image manipulation irregular image 
manipulation that you to get production in enhancement the moving or removing pictures from the original image grouping of images that should obviously be presented separately modifying the contrast brightness or color balance of the eliminate or enhance the information this all comes under uh, image manipulation and we should take care of this thing again now coming to the data classification we all know what is false what is falsification falsification is altering existing data to make it say something else that we have existing data we do some alteration in the some uh, reading uh, to show that this uh, this is uh, this data is different from that data that uh, we have i haven't copied that data from that uh, table or from that reading but this is different data to show this thing you alter the existing data uh, changing answers from real respondents in a survey is falsification falsification is manipulating research materials equipment or processes or changing or omitting data or results such that that is not accurately represented in the research report so all this is data falsification uh, uh, what we do that we we have existing data but we uh, uh, you, i haven't done sir i don't know uh, if i will alter uh, what the what the results will be the results will come and that result come in accurate when that result come in accurate then that expert or the external examiner he comes to know that this data is not real data it is falsified data and your that search manuscript or pst work or the attempt at the work that comes to uh, dismissal part or rejection part then comes the avoiding plagiarism we have talked about so many types of plagiarism so many types of authorship now the part comes to how can we avoid plagiarism so the best remedy on the only remedy to avoid plagiarism is simply be honest so work, honestly, centimeter. work with integrity and give credit where it is due acknowledge the author of original so, work you have used and your your work will never come under the plagiarism your work with the plagiarism ये क्वालिटी बॉस दैन क्या पे चट्टी बनी है यू आर ऑन वर्क एज ऑफन एज पॉसिबल बट मेरा वो वाला बटन बनिया ना यार जो कहते हो वो दूसरा वाला तू दिन देखा है ना तो क्रिएट योर ओन मैजिक क्रिएट योर ओन आइडियाज यू कैन पावर योर वोकैबुलरी एंड पावर योर इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज एंड यू विल बी एबल टू फ्रेम योर ओन सेंटेंसेस और योर ओन थीसेस योर ओन वर्ड एंड दैट विल हेल्प avoid plagiarism in the real manner then quote or cite the sources properly the sources that you are do the reference that you uh, the i have already told you that if you do not mention mention the right sources it comes under source based plagiarism then you should quote it in the university guidelines that the university uh, uh, gives or allows to every you uh, phd research scholar or am tech research scholar that guidelines in guidelines they have written that in which style you have to um, uh, in which uh, style Hello? you have to mention the references hmm. that bibliography bibliography uh, do do le le it may be in ml style ab style chicago style there are different hmm. styles and do chaddi do that style has been mentioned it may be your journal publication uh, it may be your conference proceedings conference for uh, uh, you can conference paper presentation or anything uh, the, the style has been mentioned over here then comes uh, we were talking about smartness and super smartness so i will let you know the super smartness of this it information technology uh, that there are various softwares and various tools i will also discuss with you what are that uh, what are the names of that various tools uh, uh, or applications that we can use to check the plagiarism or with the expert committee or the journal reviewers they uh, take help to check the originality uh, there there are various tools or application that uh, produce a original report of your reality report of your thesis uh, in that uh, application you go you submit the thesis and on the other hand it creates it generates the original report on the board that uh, very clearly tells you like in the report that you are seeing there is 23% of, uh, uh, similarity in that and it is again show that how it became and 23% it is showing 23 22% it is getting that from uh, student papers 2% from other publication that 2% from internet sources like uh, this uh, again 22% student sources 21% from the student papers that have been submitted to university of worcester that 1% from submitted to the university of newcastle similarly they tell you everything that this line this word this part of paragraph from where did you take this originality report 
that tells you everything that from where did you take the data. Uh, that was 23% similarity address, uh, uh, similarity index, this is 11% similarity index, and I have already told that to 15, 10 to 15% is acceptable. In some universities, very rare universities, up to 20% is acceptable. And after that, uh, your, uh, your first project or first thesis comes under plagiarism, and you have to improve it. And if the plagiarism is too much, your first work that will be rejected. In this again, you can see, uh, see that it is 11%, 6% from internet sources, 0% from publication, and 7% from student sources. This uh, information technology, it is very fast and very smart. This tells everything uh, about this thing. Uh, this, is, uh, this is in mode, uh, this is originality report that can be rejected, uh, that research paper will be rejected, that research thesis will be rejected, in which so much originality report will be there. Like there is 100% similarity uh, in depth, 72% from internet sources, 6% from publication, 100% student papers. And all this uh, shows that your research thesis or your research paper that is 100% uh, plagiarized and it will get rejected. Then uh, I, I, I will discuss with you some tools or some applications that you can use for the checking of plagiarism. Uh, uh, some plagiarism tools are also available on the uh, internet, on the Google that are free of cost, but we shouldn't rely on those tools, those applications that are free of cost in some uh, tools, what, uh, what they do that you can check part by part, one para, two para, they, they allow 100, 1000 words, 250, 500 words, 1500 words like this, you can check. But their tools are not reliable, there are some uh, paid tools or uh, paid applications for which you have to take the subscription or in some universities they also give research to the research scholars also, you have to take the membership, you have to pay the membership fees with the library and you can use those tools to check your uh, research work. Uh, here I have mentioned some tools like Creeper, Quotas, Beauty Checker, Small SEO tools, Free Post SEO, then Grammarly, Grammarly check the grammatical mistakes, then plagiarism director that detector check plagiarism.com and Ternity. Ternity is uh, Ternity is, is known as the most authentic plagiarism tool that is used by uh, different universities. Most of the universities check the dissertation or thesis of their PhD research scholars or MTech research scholars. Turnip is a is authentic tool and it can be uh, realized upon. But one thing more I would like to let you know that if you have access to this uh, tool and you are, uh, if you are using this tool to check your plagiarism and uh, you have come to know that your search work it is showing 5% plagiarism or 10% plagiarism that is acceptable. And in your login ID that you have to delete that thesis. If you do not delete, when your search supervisor or another person checks that on the internet is sure that search thesis or search paper is already there and it shows 100% plagiarism. So take care of this thing, dear participant very common problem. One of my young tech students, he faced this problem and then he had to go to that person and that he had to get that paper deleted and after that when his paper was deleted from there, only then when his research supervisor he checked it, then he that, uh, that came under and that uh, this, this paper is original, uh, that paper had only 4% otherwise it was 300 percent so you should take care of these things. So uh, coming towards the last slide, uh, then uh, reading improves your writing. Uh, reading is very important practice. Uh, reading English newspaper, English paper, English literature, uh, this is very good habit. Uh, it improves your writing, uh, read as often as possible. It helps you powerful vocabulary, it is your vocabulary word. Like when you are writing a thesis, uh, the words, right words do not come into your mind. Discuss with your colleagues and friends. You can discuss with your colleagues and friends. And uh, reading improves ideas, your test management. And reading is very good.
good practice you should when you are in the habit of writing you should develop the habit of reading also then coming to the publication ethics the don'ts what are the don'ts multiple submissions you should not do multiple submission i hope you got my point that you have written one such paper and you want to get it published in a b c any journal and you have submitted your such paper to one journal and uh, it is taking time and you, uh, your friend tells you that you go to that journal and you get it published your paper uh, very soon uh, you want to submit that such paper over there also you cannot submit one such paper to the two journals or the two conferences and if you want to submit that such paper to the other journal you have to withdraw your submission from that journal you have to write an email to that journal that i am withdrawing my such paper i am not interested in getting published my such paper with your journal so i am withdrawing after that they will send you a mail that your paper has been withdrawn you can send it anywhere then you can submit it to another journal so if you are uh, uh, doing multiple submissions and your paper gets published uh, in two journals uh, that is two pound printing per day then again it comes as a plagiarism out of that then uh, plagiarism we should avoid plagiarism we have talked about so many types of plagiarism uh, direct plagiarism complete plagiarism partial plagiarism inaccurate plagiarism source based plagiarism and uh, we should uh, we should avoid all these types of plagiarism improper author contribution uh, this is again in inaccurate plagiarism that we already talked guest authorship post authorship and uh, gift authorship we should also uh, avoid this thing it is also comes under don then data fabrication and falsification we have talked in the detail about data fabrication and data falsification and conflict of interest these all comes under the uh, don of publication ethics now so coming to the last slide what are the ethical guidelines in such an publication first thing is educate yourself that university or uh, organization from which if you are pursuing the phd that university have given you the guidelines uh, they may be in 10 to 15 pages guidelines on which everything is mentioned so you should read it uh, time to time read it again and again and grasp everything and you should educate yourself and what your thesis should be written and what the university requires and what not to be mentioned you should educate yourself and this is uh, this is the number one ethical guideline that you should follow then make a thorough search your search should be thorough and you should yourself do the research then learn rules for citation and references i have already talked about references Uh, it can be done in ml style it may it can be done in apa style or chicago style there are different styles you can refer according to the guidelines of the university but you should learn these rules then paraphrase there are different rules to cite or reference the uh, this uh, such paper in your uh, uh, in your thesis or in your such paper then paraphrase Uh, a paraphrase by doing the paraphrase your paraphrase language should not be too close to the original work for that you have to you have to develop an habit of reading uh, reading books uh, reading newspaper uh, reading research papers uh, reading you can say literature uh, reading various pieces you will come to know how to frame the sentences what action words you can use what verbs you can use what type of tense you can use by framing that particular sentence then check your work uh, when uh, check it uh, recheck it uh, then uh, the work that i have done when i check it i uh, i think that i have done it full attention it is very good i have put it full attentively and i am unable to see my errors what mistakes i have performed for that purpose you should uh, get it checked from your colleagues from your expert from your advisor or some english expert your english professor english teacher he can help you in checking your work when other person checks your work and he will let you know what to improve how to improve what are the error in your work it is very important part when your thesis has been completed before finding it and uh, getting the rough print so you can get it just from the person on whom you may have a uh, complete confidence and faith then cite your source your quotation present your own idea 
this is very important thing in this work work that you should present your own idea uh, create your own magic you should not copy matter from any other person this research work then you use plagiarism checker that i have already discussed that there are different type of plagiarism checkers that you can use to check your the originality of your research work understand the value of citation then double check your work i have already talked check your work when you check it then double check it get it double check put all direct quote in quotation mark and when in doubt uh, give a uh, citation uh, so dear participant this is all uh, i uh, talked about the and publication ethics or the ethical issues or ethical guidelines while writing a research paper or phd research uh, dissertation phd research and uh, thesis or it may be a uh, tech research thesis or any master there are various forms of coming to the conclusion now i am concluding my talk and there are various forms of unethical practices that author got to sometimes intentionally and opinionally by accident so being aware of these ethical ethics publication ethics the research ethics and listed here in will help the experts the leaders to consistently avoid the misconduct and perform honest ethical research and publication so dear participants Uh, dear uh, research scholar, you should take Hello? care of the ethical guidelines that I have talked today in detail. Hello. Hi. A different type of plagiarism, then data fabrication, data falsification, and inaccurate authorship, post authorship, gift authorship. You, you should take care you? of all these things. And main thing is that you should double Who's check your pieces before getting binded. and before uh, submitting you to your uh, respective institution so uh, up to this uh, my talk is over any person uh, who is willing uh, to uh, who has any query uh, regarding this uh, please give to us thank you sir uh, dear participants the session is open for discussion we have to add the interview in very brief in the brief we will write that thing. we have to add remit people pata hai nahi remit people kaun sa tool hai summary note tool hai summary mein bhi word dalna hai us pe tool hai the literature review is a part of your set you have to add it you need to add it okay sir thank you very much sir ठीक है देख लिया
So that is the, the right person who will guide you in a right way. Otherwise, you have to get the certificate of only that experiment that done. Otherwise, you can uh, get guidance or get advice or you can consult your uh, research supervisor. Thank you, sir. Because we have the chance of changing the topic at the uh, last moment also, no? That's okay. why I'm confused. Okay. Uh, you should discuss with your supervisor. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, another question, sir. During the vice versa, um, the thesis will be submitted uh, before uh, why why is it? Yes, yes. So, it might be taken to foreign countries or what, sir? Yes. Uh, you have to submit one uh, soft copy of the dissertation and that dissertation, soft copy of dissertation uh, uh, reaches that external examiner abroad, out of India, uh, through email. Right? That and also applies to collect those big versions. Yes. 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 There are people concerned person who have links with your guide. Okay. What Thanks for the participants for having patience and listening to my words. I 
Thank you.